Now we're going to demonstrate intravenous techniques. The first thing we're going to do is obtain a blood sample and then we'll show administering medication. The first essential thing is to make sure the head is restrained properly and I want to make sure you can see that she has her halter tied very tightly and she also has a nose lead which has slightly less tension on it pulled around to the side and you want to get as much leverage there as possible because a cow like this one that's had a lot of medication begins to react as soon as you touch her. Next thing we want to do is just clean the area slightly and then the immediate area right over the vein we want to get prepared so it looks good for, for uh, obtaining a blood sample from the jugular. It's helpful to just hold off the vein at some distant point and then stroke it and you, you can usually feel it on your hand, the blood in the, in the vein bouncing against your finger, maybe you can see that. It also helps to pump that vein up to a maximal size so it has a bigger target. In taking the blood sample, then you can simply take a small gauge needle, go right directly over the vein, and quickly thrust it right into the cow's vessel and pull out the sample that you want and then you can put it into whatever tubes are appropriate for the test you're running. You want to make sure you get it out of the syringe as quickly as possible so that you don't uh, end up with a clot that then you can't uh, retrieve. Next thing will be to put a needle into the vein for purposes of administering medication. And you can see how this cow changes the position of her vessel every time she makes a movement like that. So it's important that you get a needle that is inserted well into the vessel for some distance so that there's less chance that the needle might get out of the vein as the cow changes position. In that regard, we're going to use a 14 gauge 2 inch needle so that we can have a maximal amount of this needle threaded into the vessel. I'd also like to point out that you can get the maximum amount of needle into the vessel if it enters in a perpendicular direction, then is tipped up and, in, and threaded down the vessel so that the majority of it will be in the, in the vessel. If you go in on a very acute angle as it enters the skin, you use up a lot of the sha shaft of that needle until you reach the vein and then it's more likely to pull out as she changes position. Now we're going to do this same maneuver, hold off the vessel, stroke it to get it pumped up to make a larger target and we're going to hold the needle strictly by the shaft so that it comes out at about a right angle to the axis of my arm. Take a firm hold on the hub by some method such as this so that it can't be gotten from your hand or changed position. We take aim with a vessel that's maximally dilated and then when she's in a comfortable position we make one quick thrust to get the, to get the needle into the center of the lumen. And then we turn it loose immediately. We'll try this. At that point, the needle is now directly into the lumen of that vessel. And we'll very gently try to tip it up and thread it. with a fairly quick thrust into that vessel. You might have to twist it a little bit to get the bevel away from the wall of the vein. Now we're sure it's in. Now we can be safe in administering medication, which we do by gently holding the hub, taking the adapter of the simplex, attach it on there very gently without moving the needle, hold it at a position that's somewhat distant to that needle and then we can see the medication go in 
And the reason for holding it up here is that if you hold the shaft of the needle, every time she jumps, you have a chance of changing the position of the needle. Sometimes it might be outside and you'd end up with paravascular medication. We can check this periodically by gently slipping down here, grasping the needle, detaching and holding this off, hold off the vein, see if blood continues to pour out like it is there. That indicates that there's no chance that that needle is not in the vein. When we're finished giving the administration, we give it a quick thrust to pull it out and then always rub the vein out very well to make sure that she doesn't have some leakage and a paravascular uh, hematoma.